Welcome to Zeki Gadgets, make your life easier. Things first, let me just quickly show you the unboxing experience so you can see what is and what's not included when you buy one. So just like the last couple of years, Samsung ships these S22s in a slim little box, which is your indication that there's not a whole lot inside. Cutting into the stickers and sliding off the lid, the first thing you're greeted by is the phone itself. I got mine in white, which you can see looks really nice actually. It's also available in black, pink, green, graphite, blue, violet, cream, tons of colors to choose from this year. The only other thing inside the box here is a small cardboard packet. Fixed to the outside of it is your SIM ejector tool there, and inside you have a USB-C cable for charging and your basic quick start guide. And that's it. Once again, no other included accessories here. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the S22 itself once again. Peeling those stickers off of a fresh new phone is always very satisfying. So let's talk S22. And the first big thing I think you're going to notice about this phone actually is its smaller size. This this is now a 6.1 inch device. The S21 and even the S20 were 6.2 inches. You can see the size difference here with last year's phone. It's noticeable for sure. The S22 is shorter, slimmer. The S10 was the last flagship phone with these dimensions. And I can't remember there ever being an instance before this where the S series got smaller compared to the previous year. Now I know a lot of people will like this. The S22 is really comfortable in the hand. Super easy to reach every corner and edge of the screen. But even with that seemingly minor decrease in size, it might just influence more people this year to opt for the S22 Plus. You might also notice that the S22 has totally even bezels all the way around now, no little bottom chin. You get an 87.4% screen to body ratio, center hole punch selfie camera, and honestly, I think this is just about as perfect of a screen setup as you could ask for. It's also totally flat, no curved edges or anything like that. The whole phone is pretty much flat, actually. The sides and frame don't have much of a taper anymore. Sort of that ice cream sandwich design. I think the polished mirror finish of the aluminum housing on this white S22 also really looks high end. And around back, the S22 is finished with frosted glass again. No more faux glastic plastic cover. It's just great to see a fully high end build with premium materials all the way around. And just quickly taking a look at everything else, nothing really on the left side of the device. On the right side, you'll see the usual volume buttons and power button and a 5G antenna. Down below, dual SIM tray with no SD card support, alongside the USB-C port for charging, and one of two speakers. The second speaker, of course, is hidden in that tiny earpiece slit across the top above the selfie camera, and around back, an updated triple lens camera setup, which I'll talk more about in just a bit. Underneath the display, of course, the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is back, and it's just as quick as ever. Just using the setup on last year's S21 was great, and I think Samsung's fingerprint reader is still one of the best in the business. You barely even have to touch it and you're into the phone. It's really pretty good. Speaking of the display, let's talk a little bit more about the specs here. The 6.1 inch screen is once again a dynamic AMOLED 2X panel that offers HDR10 plus support. It's an adaptive 120 hertz high refresh rate, of course, which makes the phone feel very responsive. It is though still just a 2340 by 1080 resolution display. It packs in about 425 pixels per inch now, which is technically a little better than last year due to its smaller size, but the same 1080 resolution nonetheless. In putting the S22 side by side with my S21, I mainly noticed a little less of a cool blue tint with whites, a bit deeper blacks, but overall similar brightness to me at least, and an almost identical viewing experience when consuming content. I'm not aware of any significant changes to the display really on the S22 versus last year. I'm not sure it would have been necessary. The screen is obviously very good, but if you want the best of the best, QHD resolution, higher peak brightness, you will have to opt for the S22 Ultra. That's where you'll find a significantly better display spec-wise. When it comes to the out loud listening experience, the S22 offers a dual stereo speaker setup like I mentioned before. And again, I'm not aware of any changes to the speaker setup at all. It sounds perfectly good, just like the previous S series phones. And here's a sound sample so you can get an idea. Year over year, the thing that's 
pretty much guaranteed to change on these flagship phones is the processor inside that powers them. And this year for the S22, we of course get a brand new, most powerful chipset. Depending on where in the world you live, your S22 will either get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or Samsung's own Exynos 2200. Everyone gets the same 8 gigs of RAM, that's the only option this year, and the choice of either 128 or 256 gigs of storage. The phone will ship with Android 12 and One UI 4.1, of course. There's actually already a security update available for this phone. And checking out the Geekbench scores, here are those numbers for your reference. You can also see some other stats of this new processor inside, and when we compare it to what was inside the S21, we can see some big improvements across the board. Now, it's always kind of tough to really gauge speed and performance increases with these new phones, simply because they're already so powerful. And more improvements will generally be minor at best, but I'm still looking forward to putting this phone to the test and pushing it really hard, because I'm obviously very curious about how the new Snapdragon chipset in mine handles a ton of gaming, for example, or more intense apps and multitasking. And most importantly, also how efficient it is as more and more apps get loaded up. I'm also very curious about its optimization and battery life potential, because with a small phone like this, we are a bit limited in the size of battery that fits inside. The S22 this year is fitted with a 3700 milliamp battery inside, and by just capacity alone, that's a decrease. In fact, I think that's rather small by today's standards, with a lot of other phones rocking 4500 to 5000 milliamp batteries. With this, I'm really going to be keeping an eye on how this phone performs throughout the day and how long it might end up lasting. I'm hoping for the best, but we'll see what happens. As far as the rest of the power features, you get 25 watt fast wired charging support, 15 watt wireless charging, 4.5 watt reverse charging, all much of the same stuff we've seen before and nothing really that stands out. Finally, when it comes to the cameras, Samsung has once again changed up the specs and hardware in more ways than one. The selfie camera is easy. It appears to be the same spec 10 megapixel f2.2 aperture shooter that we've had for a few years now. But around back, the main camera lens is now a brand new 50 megapixel f1.8 aperture shooter. It's paired with a 10 megapixel telephoto lens and what appears to be the same 12 megapixel 120 degree ultra wide from last year as the third lens. For the most part, inside the camera app you'll find find pretty much the same shooting modes and features as last year, with some noteworthy additions including better telephoto capabilities with three times optical zoom now, improved portrait pictures with additional processing and scene optimization, better night mode and low light shots, 50 megapixel option for capturing all the detail, 8K video returns as well, director's view is still there, the zoom in mic, and plenty of other helpful add-ons and useful camera settings that you'd expect to find on a top tier flagship setup. Overall, the new S22 is no doubt a minor upgrade from last year's S21. It really just boils down to a couple of things. Minor new design and slightly smaller size, a bit of a tweak to the display, spec boosts with the processor and performance, and really the biggest thing, noticeably improved cameras. But hopefully you guys did enjoy- Subscribe Zeki Gadgets for new innovations.